Hmm, I know something about you. Many of you CEOs here share one common nightmare. In fact, you struggle to get things done. There's a gap between your strategies and your execution. As a matter of fact, as a consequence of this gap, global organizations lose as much as $3 million a minute. In this rate, by the end of my speech, ladies and gentlemen, this money would have paid for a Nordic Business Forum VIP ticket for every forum around the world in first-class flights, five-star hotels with Michelin-style meals for every one of you here and for the rest of your life. I can see the CEO of the Nordic Business Forum smiling there. This perennial issue of strategy execution got me to ask, should we, after all, skip strategy and just execute? Well, for this, I try to answer this nagging question and try to come up with solutions from unusual places. I picked up my phone and my passport to go talk to ordinary people like you and me, but engaged in extraordinary missions, sometimes even at the risk of their own life. My presentation today is about the specific lessons on how to execute strategy in the 21st century. Chapter one, climate change changing us. One recent historical achievement is the Paris 2015 Climate Change Agreement, negotiated by 196 countries. That's a huge task. Imagine how hard it already is to negotiate with one person, your partner, for example, and on trivial things like taking the rubbish bag out. Now, how do these top leaders strategize to tackle a global crisis and to execute on its solutions? Is there such a thing as one strategy to execute it all well? And so I asked. Christiana Figueres, former executive secretary of the United Nations Convention on Climate Change. I don't know that there is a strategy, right? I think that would assume that there is too much organization that is actually not possible. This is not about a project uh, that needs to be occurred. This is the transformation of the entire economy. So it's very hard to say that you have a strategy. What we have is a blueprint of transformation, which is the Paris Agreement. There is no one global strategy. There is one blueprint that took years just to agree on. But are the countries getting to the targets? Are they cutting down on the emissions. After the Kyoto Protocol, emissions, which had been going up 1.5% per year, actually accelerated and went up 2.5% per year. So because there's no real constraint, even though countries said, oh, we're going to try to have targets, that won't do it. That was James Hansen, former NASA scientist and considered the father of climate change. What does this teach us about execution? In order for countries to execute an, an agreed blueprint, we have to introduce a big constraint that pushes them to act to overcome inertia. But then, is it the same for businesses? Do they skip on strategies? I asked Peter Bakker, CEO of the World Business Council on Sustainable Development. I don't think you can ever skip strategy because as much as we all are here uh, out of a passion for the climate, we cannot only solve the climate change issue. I think we're much more in real-time strategy adjustments. So as things change, what can we do to adapt? We need to change strategies in real time. What does this teach us? It is then about us, the people. It is about our ability to change. This then begs the question, is execution a human behavior challenge instead? This 
is what I explored next. Chapter two, up, up and away. Edmund Hillary and Sherpa Tenzing Norge were the first to finally conquer the crown of the world, reaching the top of Mount Everest. Bertrand Piccard was one of the first to go around the world on a balloon. He also made the first successful round-the-world solar-powered flight. 40,000 kilometers! Amazing! But how did these leaders reach and maintain peak performance? Well, I asked Bertrand Piccard himself. For us, it was always the difference between the bee and the wasp. If you have a room with several windows and only one window is open and you have a bee and a wasp in the room, they both go to the first window, which is closed. The bee will continuously try to go through the glass and will die. And the wasp will try all the windows and take the one that is open to survive. We had to be the wasp and not the bee. So each time we had a problem, we had to adapt. We had to change. We had to find advisors outside of our fields of competencies. Are you a bee or a wasp? This notion of adapting to change keeps coming up. How can we build this adaptability inside of us to execute on strategies that now have to evolve faster and faster? For this, I asked one of those who followed the footpath of the Everest pioneers. Stephen Chow climbed Mount Everest with his team in 2005. He told me that whatever keeps everything together is the mental resilience that you build, not just for yourself, but also for your teammates. It's not about you. It is about you and those that are around you. But I wanted specifics. What built his resilience. If you, for some reason, you don't succeed, that's it. It's still a wonderful journey, but then the, the, the end result is you don't reach the top. That's not just three years of preparation you're giving up. That's years of pondering on whether you have missed your only chance to reach the top of the world. This teaches me that peak performers see execution through because of the motivation behind, because of the trade-offs that they make, because they make it bigger than themselves, because for them sometimes it is their only chance, because they are wasps. Now, is that all? Is it about getting the strategy right and the right people in? What could I be missing here? What do you think? Turn to your neighbors and share your thoughts for the next 30 seconds. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. As for me, I have found out that increasingly now, execution is about how your strategy and your people interact with algorithms. Intelligent algorithms that now can do both the thinking and executing for you. Chapter three. Go, go, go. Gone too far. AlphaGo is an algorithm that plays Go, one of the most difficult games in the world. AlphaGo has beaten, hands down, the best of human players. That was shocking news. But why all the fuss? Because it is a first demonstration that an algorithm can learn by itself, without any guidance, in a human way, without a set of instructions or rules. A self-learning algorithm is now a game changer. What does this tell us about executing on strategy? 
Yuval Harari, author and writer, describes the impact for us. You can apply to your bank for a loan, and the bank will give your application to an algorithm to process. And the algorithm goes over massive amounts of data about you and statistics about millions of other people to recognize patterns, who is returning a loan and is credit worthy and who isn't. And the algorithm decides not to give you a loan. And the bank says, sorry, we don't give you a loan. And you ask the bank why. And the bank says, we don't know. The algorithm said no. And we trust the algorithm. Yuval Harari further says that algorithms processing enormous quantities of enormous data would be so much better at decision-making than humans that it would make sense to give them control over more and more areas of our lives. Yes, nowadays, an algorithm can make a phone call on your behalf to a real person. Our takeaway from Go is that for many businesses, there is, to begin with, no strategy on how to deal with these algorithms that can outsmart them. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, what have we been taught today on how to execute on strategy in the modern age? Five takeaways. One, there's a big gap between strategy and execution, and we are currently paying an enormous price on this. Two, countries spend a lot of time to agree on the blueprint, but they need real constraints in order to act on their words. Constraints should be put by design for ourselves because they bring needed urgency and priority. Three, execution depends enormously on people. Now we need to be able to handle changes both physically and emotionally, both personally and in a team. Four, should we skip on strategies and just execute? No, else would be like an elephant running into a china shop. Given the fast and fast changes, we need to be able to have real-time strategy adjustments. And five, the powerful technologies that we have nowadays are going to help us to think faster and better. We now have to redefine the process of execution. Ladies and gentlemen, your strategies are true to you. Make them matter. Now, let's go and get stuff done. Thank you.